23 games down, 15 to go in our third season in the Premier League. We are currently sixth in the league table, and this season could still go in so many different directions. We are pretty much desperate to finish in a Europa League spot. Technically, we're only one point out of the top four, nine points back of league leaders Man City. Not that I expect us to win the league, but that said, we are still just seven points clear of 11th place Bournemouth. There's really no way of knowing just how this season is going to go yet, but I do hope to finish the season in today's episode. Time will tell whether or not there are any unforeseen circumstances or not. Of course, in the last episode, the team changed somewhat significantly as we saw the departure of the likes of Ovi Anderson and, of course, the loaning out, the selling of others, including, of course, our, you know, our long-term goalkeeper, which still... Oh, that one kind of upsets me a little bit. But we will see how today's episode goes. Walter, I don't even know if we're going to need you, but more than likely we will. I believe our team is good to go. I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to sim, I guess, quote-unquote, live here. But our first team is pretty much good to go. Let's sim this game against Watford and see if we can start this episode off on a high note. It's a home game. They are not in good form whatsoever. 3-2-1, and we get the 1-0 win. Galliano scores. Of all people to score, Eugenio Galliano. I will take that, and we do start things off on a very strong note. Why you brought me back to the inbox, nobody knows, but that's okay. So as far as the training is concerned, again, I'm... I'm still undecided exactly. I think center back wise is where we still need a lot of work. So Archie Bailey is still going to be a focus. He is tremendous with the ball at his feet, but we do need to get that stamina up. And I mean, really, there is the one challenge to do it. So keep up the pace. We'll try to keep Bailey uh, moving forward. And I think in general, again, the center backs will get a lot of focus. We'll still have him focusing on the defensive side of the ball. Williams will be the other one. It needs to be a Bailey-Williams pairing moving forward. Around the time that we're thinking, oh, this, you know, we could maybe win the league and start to establish a bit of European dominance and success. It's going to be those two, you know, really being the main part of that defensive wall for us if we are going to find that level of success. And then from there, it's a little bit tough to say, who else should get the focus? Of course, we do have Meyer and get, uh, Granero. Of course, Granero has lost the trait, but that's because he's pretty much already there. Meyer still listed as a promising player, but we'd benefit a little bit more from bumping up somebody like Miranda, Villalaba, Fuentes, and Zahner, But they're all developing on their own. I think it would be, I think it would be Miranda. Or Young Bauer. And Young Bauer right now is, I think, he's got to be the one that gets bumped up. Because again, whether or not we're able to switch to a formation that relies upon wingers is really dependent on Young Bauer's development right now. Of course, we get rid of Anderson because we have Villalaba, Fuentes, and Zahner on that left hand side. But we need to start bumping up someone like Young Bauer, Kiesta, and Ponce on that right hand side if that formation is ever going to be a possibility. So I think those will be the ones that we focus the training on for the majority of the episode. As far as Leandro Diaz is concerned, we tried to sell the extra center back during the window. That did not happen, but hopefully that deal will go through. Really, in terms of the center backs right now, we're looking relatively decent. It's not amazing. There's another offer for Diaz as well. Of course, I'm not going to do the whole you know trick with the loans or anything like that. I'm just going to hit the button until it finally goes through. Again, it's a damn shame that they haven't fixed that at all this year. Not that I expected them to. We get a loan offer for Gil Kiesta, which how many different ways can I mispronounce his last name? Trust me, I'll keep thinking of more. We'll see if we can get him to be loaned out as well. As we move on to play Palace, we held in 6th, and we are looking for another victory here. The only change will be getting Meyer into the lineup. 
And I think it will be for Romero. So we'll have Meyer, Kelly, Villalaba, Berezovsky, Cano, Johansson, and Bailey. And we're looking pretty good, to be honest, with that setup. Not too bad at all. The only change, of course, it's like, yeah, you know, having DeGroote, having Diaby on the bench could be helpful. Of course, it is a shame that there aren't going to be that many chances for a lot of these younger guys on the second team because, you know, we've been eliminated from certain tournaments. But hopefully... They still end up developing. We are on the road playing Crystal Palace. They are in terrible form, but a road game against Palace is not going to be easy. They have some decent pieces there as well with Isaac. Coletta Carr is not all that bad. I'm going to sim the rest of this 3-2-1. Hey, that's a huge win. Isaac ended up scoring, but we do get the goals. Duarte scored in the same minute as Isaac to win the game for us. Duarte and Montendom with the goals. And we are two for two in today's episode thus far. And that moves us into fourth, although Liverpool and Chelsea have yet to play. But still, very, very big game for us there. Winning a game on the road, you know, winning a game at home, sure. Winning a game on the road against Crystal Palace, when it always seems like you run into a team that's in bad form, they at least take a point away from you. I mean, if not, you know take all three points away from you they at least take points away from you we get the win there and that is a big big deal hopefully geronimo miranda will end up being loaned out one can hope we have a match against liverpool rescheduled i don't think we'll be in fourth by the time the weekend is done we get an offer fc basel in for kovac who we are looking to sell i was hoping that he would have been gone before the window closed, but hopefully that goes through. He'll be off to Switzerland, and we are still there, but Liverpool and Chelsea, when the hell do they play, is the question. Playing Bournemouth here on the 21st, I talked about just how you know barely ahead of Bournemouth we were in the grand scheme of things. Now we end up having to play them. The team is still good to go in terms of fitness. Let's do it. Can we go 3-0 and to begin an episode? It's another home game. They are not in the best of form either. Fingers crossed this goes well for us. 3-2-1 and 3-1 final. Two goals for Montendon. A goal for Johannesson off the bench at center back. And we are 3-0 thus far in today's episode. That is gigantic for us. Liverpool, I believe, ended up dropping points if not getting... I think they, yeah, they ended up with a draw, I think. We are now five points clear of Liverpool with them having a game at hand. We're looking okay. I'm not I'm not wanting to get too excited over this. We get a transfer off of Orlando City in for Kude, who we can get rid of, of course. Hopefully that goes through. I highly doubt it will, as Diaz has yet to be sold, as is the case with the majority of the players. We will continue on with the training. Again, fairly straightforward. Bailey at this rate is going to take over for Harrison Wright as a center back by the end of the season, which is a really promising thing for us. Is it Liverpool up next? It is. March 1st, a game against Liverpool. It's a big one, too. Kovac has been sold. All right, so Simon, Simon Kovac, hate to see you go, but he is out of here, so the right back situation, again, is good to go. It's O'Leary, Johansson and Roldan. Miranda has also been loaned out. So next season, he will be in Portugal, I do believe. And hopefully, we can send Ponce out to Austria, I do believe. Uh, Jay, you're welcome, buddy. Keep playing Keep playing well. You're one of the longest tenured members of this club at this point. You are very welcome, sir, as this is a huge game. We're two points clear of Liverpool and Chelsea. Three points back of Everton with the same amount of games played. Ten points back with a game at hand on City. Again, not saying that I expect us to compete for the league title here. Not at all. But with 12 games left, we are right where we want to be. And if we can beat Liverpool, a club that we have some history in terms of going up against, the FA Cup final and all, if we can beat them or at least get a point at Anfield, we are going to be in a very, very good spot. Let's see what happens. Can we get the win? They still have Allison and goal. I'm going to sim it. 3-2-1.
Ah, Liverpool still too good. Talisca and Diego Jota with the goal. Diego Jota, I believe it is. That is a rough loss, and it drops us back into sixth. Very tough. Very tough loss to take. That was a huge game for us. All things considered, if we're able to steal points against the five teams who are ahead of us, we have a real chance. But losing that game hurts a lot. But that's okay. There are levels to this game, of course, and we're not quite on their level. Oh, God, we get to play United afterwards, too. Uh, we will try to loan out Zuabri. Hopefully that goes through to LAFC. Uh, as if it's not rough enough having to play Liverpool, we get to play Man U directly afterwards. Now, they're not exactly up there in the standings, from what I recall, unless they were in second, but I believe that was Everton. So we should be okay. We get a transfer offer for Diaz. Again, for the love of God, just let that go through. We also have our scouting updates that we will get to in just a moment. I want to see where United currently are in the standings. They're down in 11th. Huge opportunity here, although I imagine the squad that they're running is still extremely strong. We're going to be running this first team that we have been running with for the entire episode. Oh, yeah. I mean, Martial, Lukaku still there, Pogba, Deli Alli. That is, we're, oh, God, we're up against it in this game. Big time. Big time game. And again, same thing for the Liverpool game. As long as we get in that transfer budget, man. <laughs> could buy whoever the hell we wanted. As long as we get a point out of the game, I'm happy. There's no guarantees, however. Uh, Virgilio Segura will obviously be released. Justin Haber will be staying. Noah Cameron staying. Uh, Isam Taher. Isam Taher will be fine. Uh, Saeed Kluchi is on the way out, as is Ben Zarecki, 16 and a 47. No reason to try and develop him. My God, that other Galliano. We'll call them the Galliano brothers because we need to. But again, the Youth Academy is looking great. We're going to have some additions here. Let's see if there's anybody. No, there is not. Sadami would be the top offer or the top option, I suppose. But we're not going to offer him a deal. At least not yet. Same with those two. We're going to wait. Actually, all three of them, we're going to wait. They're not quite at that elite level like we need them to be. Is there anybody out of Egypt? 76 to a 94 is not bad, but I'm still going to hold off until we have more information. I need to see 80s there. I know it's close, but still, I need to see 80s as a low end. We're looking for high-end talent only. Let's do this, as if that first game wasn't rough enough. Manchester United, the roster is set. Let's see what we can do. They're down in 11th. They are in terrible form, having lost to West Ham, Spurs, and Borussia Dortmund. Martial scores five minutes in. 3-2-1. Yes, I'll take that. Martial scores in the 83rd minute and then gets hurt to tie it and secure the point for United. Moritz Meyer ended up getting a goal off the bench. Galliano scored again. Anthony Martial had a great day before that injury. It's not great to have drawn against the 11th place side, but it is still Man U, and they always do well in the sim. So I'm good with that. One point, though, against Liverpool and Manchester United, that hurts. And right now we need both Liverpool and Chelsea to drop points, as well as West Ham. There is a chance... Of them catching us, there is still way too much time and way too much space and opportunity to completely botch this and end up falling down the table. Granted, not as far as we fell in our first season in the Prem, but our spot towards the top half of the table is not secured whatsoever. Reese Harris is our third choice keeper right now. I doubt we end up sending him to River Plate, very unlikely. It seems like the only time players actually get loaned out is when they end up, you know, getting offers from their home nation. And indeed, that loan was outright rejected, as has uh, Diaz. Yet again, he's had his trade offer or transfer talks broken down. We get a trade offer for Kude. Again, doubt it goes through, but one can hope. We'll have a little bit of training to do here. Again, the same five, I think, will be the focus for the entire episode, they are, or at least the, the same five sessions, the same three players. 
will continue to be the main focus. Bailey up to a 77 already. So yet again, if he's not a first choice center back this season, he will be by the start of next season. And right now we are just one point back of Chelsea, two points back of Everton, three points back of Liverpool. And we get to play Leicester coming up. There's a loan offer for Young Bauer from Brighton. I'm going to take that because we could call him back, but I still don't think we're going to be going with left mid, left wing, right mid, right wing next season. It's just not going to happen. Young Bauer's not going to be where we need him to be. So if he can get out, you know, if he can go out on loan, get that extra bit of playing time, I'm all right with it. Team stays the same. Let's go up against Leicester again. Not in great form at all. Wonder what the result was in either that Europa League matchup or Champions League matchup. Probably Europa League against Braga. Two draws. Must have gone to penalties. Or, nah, potentially. Potentially. Well, yeah, three all. Yeah, I mean, road goals might have been a factor. Halftime, no score. Let's skip it. And it ends up being a draw. It ends up being a draw. Big time wasted opportunity there to try and catch up. We are now tied with West Ham through 29 games played. We're a little bit back now of Liverpool as well. They are five points clear, but the road ahead, if Everton drops points, this is going to be very, very interesting down the stretch. Oh boy. You know what though? At the very least, if you look at last year, where we are battling at the end of the season not get relegated, we're battling for a top five spot. Mexico, I'd love to be your manager. Not going to, though. Not going to. That is not going to happen. We have nine games left this year. Young Bauer has been loaned out, which, again, we can call him back if we need to. But he'll be playing for Brighton next year, who will probably be in the Prem or the Championship. And hopefully Zwabri ends up being loaned out to Brentford. That would be great. We don't get enough offers from other teams within the four tiers. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. It should be a lot more common than it is. Noah Cameron wants out. Right. He was pretty good, too, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go double-check the Youth Academy. Cameron is a 58 at 16 years old. 5'6". All 5 foot 6 of them. But Cameron will be signed. He will be signed. So we're going to have to add him to the list. I'm not sure what uh, what the full information is, so let's take a look. Noah Cameron, welcome aboard. You're going to be too good to let walk. So let's see what you're looking like. Or not. That's right, you can't scroll up from the top. you got to go all the way down, and it sucks. Noah Cameron at the club since uh, 2026. That is true. Let's see, attribute-wise here. Three-star, five-star, medium, medium. Not bad. Not bad at all, given the circumstances. So Noah, welcome aboard. Forgot to put you up for loan, because, you know, amateur over here. Forgot to do that. We'll look to loan you out immediately. And, of course, as far as whether or not he stays or goes, we'll figure out the team at the beginning of next season, since we cleared out quite a few spots already. Williams, Bailey, and Young Bauer continuing to progress, especially for Young Bauer with that stamina. We desperately need that stamina boost. We play Southampton on the final day of the month, and last I knew they were relatively far down the food chain there. Bailey wants to start this game, and I will probably let him. I'll probably let him, because I think we got to change out Morgan and Arne as well. I want to go with players who are in top fitness right now. So, Bailey, you will get to play. And we are going to go... Wow, Romero. When the hell would Romero have played? That's very weird. It's okay, though. It is going to be Berezovsky and DeGroote who get the opportunities here to start this next game. So the midfield takes a little bit of a hit. Tamo Alton is going to be allowed to start despite not being on perfect fitness. Let's see what we can do. Where are Southampton right now in the league table? They are 15th. We need to win. If we are truly going to battle for one of these top five spots, we need a win. They beat Watford. They beat Swansea, but they did lose to Spurs. We need this win. Three, they have Jackson as well, our former keeper, I do believe. Three, two, one, and it's a draw 
Duarte tied it in the 61st minute, and that was it. And our form is slipping up a little bit. It's been a while since we've gotten a win. We're still secured for now in sixth. It's going to be dependent on whether or not West Ham wins. Because I'm not too worried about the monthly report. Archie, you're welcome, but unfortunately, the goal scoring wasn't quite where we needed it to be. We play Forest on the fifth. And this is going to be another very big game. We're down to eighth right now. We need to win to get back into that same point pace as Chelsea, Everton, and Arsenal. We need this win desperately. Venezuela, leave me alone. We'll handle the scouting here in a second. Jay, you will absolutely be playing as we try to reestablish a full fitness first team, which is not going to happen at all. So this is going to be interesting. The center backs for this game are going to be right and Williams. I'm gonna start Williams over Weber. And Bailey will have uh, will have sit for this game. Let's put Weber there. Hope for the best. This is a very big game for us now, given the circumstances that we're gonna be making certain changes here. Uh, Cameron, we can bump you up, just so you're not you know, just so you're not associating with those who are gonna be leaving the team, and then me accidentally never giving you an opportunity to play, essentially. Uh, but we are looking okay, all things considered, but it's a massive game ahead where we desperately need to pick up points. So, again, it will be Morgan. He's not on full fitness, but he will be in, as will be De Groot, or De Groot will be on the bench. Arne is coming back in for him. Berezovsky we're actually not going to have on the bench. We're going to put a full fitness Romero there. And aside from that, Montendon's going to sit for Meyer, but we'll still have him on the bench. So we got Duarte, Morgan, and Alton, and not quite on full fitness, but they are in. It's a little bit of a mixed bag lineup. Huge game against Forrest. Can we pick up points? They have lost, at the very least, their last three games. Three. Meyer scores in the fourth minute. Three, two, one. Ass. There we go. Duarte in the 67th. Harrison Wright gets roughed up. It wasn't enough to be immediately replaced in the match, so hopefully it's not that long of an injury. If it is, we do have the depth to overcome it. He's out for three days. Not bad. Not bad. Our grade, though, still a 59. A little bit concerning. Just a bit. We are going to have to worry about the scouting as well. Right now, we are in 7th as opposed to 5th. Based off a of goal differential, 7 games left in this season go figure yet again for some reason we have a flair for the dramatics it is going to come down to the final few games of the season kennedy what do you have for us out in egypt el hindi i might hold off on gondor probably not i think with gondor we have to sign him I think with, who is the other one here? With Halal, we're going to avoid because he is a keeper. But we will sign Al Hindi as well. And that'll be it from Egypt for now. Morris, what do you have for us out in the Ivory Coast? Sangare, we're going to avoid with it just being a 73. Patrice Bamba will obviously have to be signed. Absolute monster. Is there anybody else? No, we are good. Frank, hopefully you take that step up in terms of low-end potential so we do end up signing you. And Mark Barr out in Ghana. Is there anybody here? Tafari Abbas or Abbas. Uh, Gilbert Kanadu. We're okay for now. We'll hold off. We need high 70s at the very, the very least in terms of potential. Who is this next game against? I'm guessing it's going to be a big-time opponent. It's Arsenal. And this right here could decide the season. We are right now tied with Chelsea, Everton, and Arsenal. A win here would put us above West Ham if they drop points. This is a massive game. This is a massive game. A draw is necessary. A loss would be devastating. Uh, I know Meyer's in good form, but he's going to sit for Montendon. Duarte is still going to start. As far as the rest of the team is concerned, I think we look to bump up Berezovsky back to the bench. 
And for the defense, Galliano will be back in probably next to right, and we'll have Williams on the bench. Although, you know what? I want, I think I want Archie Bailey in full form. Harrison, you're going to get the start. You're in good form as opposed to full fitness. That works for me. This is our first team, our best available team. Let's see what we can do. Can we get this win or at the very least a point? Arsenal's in amazing form right now. We need a draw at the very least. Three, two, one. Damn it. Alton had scored in the 88th, but it was not enough. I think that was Stefan and goal, U.S. International. Big win for Arsenal. That's going to drop us back down to eighth in the league table. And we're going to have just a little bit of trouble. Just a little bit of trouble now trying to work our way back up to a Europa League spot. We need to go on a really good run here. We started off this episode so hot with the wins, but they have been now few and far between. And the pressure is on here. Three points back of West Ham. We play Newcastle next, who are in the bottom half of the table. And you want to talk about pressure to win. This is nearly a must-win game. We have six games left. Just six games left this season. We need a win. It's a home game. They're not in the best form. They did manage to take a point away from Chelsea, or two points away from Chelsea. Can we get the win? 3-2-1. Yes, let's go. Duarte, in the 78th minute, gets the lone goal of the game. And that puts us right back into contention. That puts us straight up into fifth. But, of course, other teams have not yet played. Again, it's going to go down to the wire. Because of course it is. Why would it not go down to the wire with this team? It's the only thing that makes sense. I know we're not on track with the board. And I'm, I'm worried. I'm sorry. But it is what it is. I'm not ignoring them. But it's, it's dependent on us winning here. So, you know, what do you want me to do? We play Wolves, who last we knew were not in the top 10. It's another game where we have to win. We can drop points to the Arsenals, to the Cities, as the voice gives out to the Everton's and the Chelsea's of the world. We need to beat those who are outside of the top 10. And hopefully we do yet again. First team, good to go. Let's do it. <sighs> Road game. Wolverhampton, what do you got for us? What do you got for us? They got crushed by Everton. They got crushed by Spurs. Montendon picks up a slight injury. 3-2-1. Oh, that's not good. Arne scored the opening goal. Tavares gets a goal just before the half, and there was nothing in that second half. That is a huge result for Wolves and a devastating loss for us. That might be the result. It's, it's close because we keep having these results where it's like, okay, that might be it for our hopes of top five, and then we battle back and get another game like that against Wolves, and we drop the ball again. We get a transfer offer for Diaz. For the love of God, just go somewhere. Get away from me. Montendon's out for three days. And Cordoba picks up a suspension due to yellow cards. So we'll see what the full outlook is here. Another offer. Leandro, please. It's for your benefit. Leave. You're not going to be playing here. It's not going to happen. West Ham. They are just behind us. In the standings, this is it yet again. Another big game. Somewhat of a heavy hitter after heavy hitter. Everton's really falling off, by the way. They're down into eighth. Training injury. Galliano's going to be out for just over a week, so we're going to be without one of our top center backs in this game. If we look at the league table, City is nearly guaranteed to win it. They'd really have to mess it up for Spurs to be able to catch them. We are currently uh, currently tied with Chelsea, but they have a game at hand. We need to win. We need to win. We're only beating West Ham right now on goal differential as well. Here we go. What is this roster going to look like for this game? It's going to be Meyer up top with Duarte. Montendon probably won't even be on the bench. It'll probably just be Kelly. We're going to have Cano in the midfield replacing Cordoba which means Diaby is going to have a spot on the bench. And as far as anybody 
uh, up top is concerned. Montandon's going to take a seat for Fuentes. So we are technically going to have two wingers on the bench for this game. And then defensively, fairly straightforward, Bailey replaces Galliano. He'll be next to Harrison Wright. And we'll have Williams on the bench. That is the way to do it. Myers up to an 81, by the way. Can this team get the job done? High pressure situation. A game against West Ham that's going to decide just how close to the top five we finish. It's a road game as well. They're in terrible form. They did just lose the City. Can we get the win? Three, two, one. It's another draw. Moritz Meyer in the 61st, uh, 61st minute. Easy for me to say. That puts us up in the fifth. But for how long when we're going to have another fairly big game on the horizon here? Is Bailey's approaching a 79. Williams just under halfway to 73. And Youngbauer is currently a 73. As far as anything here is concerned, nothing to worry about just yet. Cano, you're welcome for the opportunity to start. Where are we going to be once this game is here? And of course, scouting-wise as well. Our final few reports are going to be rolling in before we go elsewhere. Let's see what we have on our hands in terms of talent available to us. Our final few reports have just rolled in. Next up, it's Spurs. Last we knew, they were in second. I imagine they are still there. First and foremost, though, our final scouting report from Ghana. There is Freddie Adu, which I feel like I have to sign him. Right? I feel like I have to. Afenu, if I'm not completely botching that, we're going to sign him. We'll sign Justice as well. Uh, Conadu, I might look to sign. Is there anybody who's a fairly easy out? This guy is Samar. I'm sorry, you're decent, but we don't need you. Uh, Saeed Saber, Saber is going to be on the way out. Diaz is going to be on the way out. Only wanting to sign high end talents. Ibrahim Kluchi as well. Not bad at all. Not good enough. We are looking for the elite of the elite. And unfortunately for the majority of these players, it's not quite there. Like obviously, like a Justin Haber, that's, that is the standard right now. Ronaldo Correa, that is the standard. El Hindi might find a way to get there. Tahera isn't quite going to be where we need him to be. Galliano's a 61 already. Man, Galliano's, for whatever reason, absolute monsters. Absolute monsters. So let's see. No other easy outs outside of El Hindi. So we'll double check who else we have here at our disposal. Kanadu will sign. And I think there was one other half decent player. It's Abbas or Freddie Adu. And we will sign Freddie Adu. I know, I'm going to call him Adu, though. I mean, come on. See who else we have available here. Ivory Coast, what do you got for us? Sangare is worth signing, as it turns out. Siaka Soro, not quite. Innocent Torre, amazing name, but not quite what we're looking for. Kwame as well, good, but just not up to par. And out of the Egyptians, uh, Fathi Ramsey is not going to be signed. He might be the only one. Hello, halal. I think he's the last decent one. Indeed, he is. So I have no idea where the hell we're going next. We'll see what we got going on for us. As the... Nope, that's not where we wanted to go. As the world tour continues, let's see what we have here. Andrew Kennedy... I mean, we were in Africa, so we already took care of Algeria and Morocco. It is next going to be Nigeria. Callum Morris, you get to go to Cameroon. And we'll take care of South Africa with Mark Barr. And then the African portion of our world tour is over and done with. I'm surprised there's not a scout just randomly in Madagascar. For the hell of it. Let's into this game against second place Spurs. I do not expect this to be in fifth by the time we get to that game. Very, very unlikely that we're still there by the time we get to that game. But fingers crossed other teams start to run into a tough set of circumstances. 
We are still in fifth, actually. Chelsea could change that if they finally play. Huddersfield, the loan offer for Zouabri. That would be amazing if that were to go through. Have we been jumped by Chelsea? They still haven't played. They must be playing on Saturday. They must be. Let's find out. Indeed. Actually, no, they haven't jumped us. Everton have. They're a point ahead. Look at the separation, by the way, as Arsenal out of nowhere just went on that absolute tear to jump us, Chelsea, Everton, West Ham. That is insane. Arsenal with a surge that has basically secured a top four finish for them unless Everton are able to make up ground. The problem is we need to make up ground on Everton. We're just a point back, but West Ham dropped the ball. Chelsea still have a game at hand. They'll have two unless they end up playing this weekend. The pressure's on. Liverpool will probably not be able to catch Man City, which is something I hope to not have to say in real life ever again. This is this is it. This is it. We need to go on a winning streak right now. Or this season might be our last if we end up being into that much of a negative situation as a result of failing our goals. I don't know if it's that dire of a situation, but it might be. I'm uncertain, and uncertainty is scary. Eugenio Galliano will not be playing in this game either, so it will still be Bailey and Wright as the center backs. Let's see what we can do. We need at least a point. A loss here would be devastating. Let's see what happens. It's a home game as well. If Nottingham Forest can earn a draw, so can we. Three, two, one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Son, Erickson, and William Jose. Wow. I guess, I mean, that really kind of paints the picture of where we are as a club right now. I think the Europa League at this point is a pipe dream with two games left. And it's a shame because, again, things started off so well for us in this episode. We haven't performed terribly. We're going to be going from barely escaping to a top 10 finish. And from the looks of it, at the very least, a top 9 finish. As long as we don't completely botch this. But still, Zouabri has been loaned out to Huddersfield. Reese Harris will be going to France. And Kude, hopefully, will finally leave the goddamn club. That would be great. It's nice to see a couple of players scheduled to go out on loan heading into this next season. The first team, I know they're not in the best form, but they will essentially be staying the same with the addition of Galliano stepping up. Wright's in bad form, but Bailey's not at full fitness, so we'll go ahead and make that change. Galliano's back in. Let's see what we can do against Chelsea. They are currently in fifth. We can still catch them, but if we lose this game, the Europa League dream is over. The penultimate game of the season. If we lose this, we have no chance for a top five finish. Three, two, one. The dream is over. Malcolm, 34th minute penalty. Chelsea, odds are, will go on to secure that top five spot. And I can only hope that we don't get sacked once it finally, once the other results roll in of our failed goals this season. It would be a devastating way to have this end. Our best season to date. But if it's just not enough, because the board was probably expecting a little bit too much out of a team that barely survived relegation, It'd be a damn shame if this were to be our final season here. But I do suppose there is a chance of that. We have one game left this year. I'm worried anytime the sim kind of pauses. Let's take a look. Oh, thank God. Youth player wants out. Ramon Galliano. I thought that was going to be it. That little pause had me very, very concerned. Galliano will be signed. Maybe... Maybe. You know, I will sign Ramon Galliano for now. And probably probably either immediately sell him or he'll jump somebody else on the depth chart. But let's see what we have with Galliano. He is three star, three star, medium low. That's not terrible for a cam, I suppose. 
could be a hell of a lot worse. Our final game of the season is against Stoke. And we'll see what the full table situation is. And Ronaldo Correa also wants out. Did we not just sign him recently? I swear that we did. Regardless, Ronaldo Correa will absolutely be signed. That's not even a question in terms of the potentials there. So obviously heading into this next season, if we're still around, there's going to be a decent amount of turnover with players that we have to look to move on from. But with someone like Guzman being loaned out to Palace, let's take a look at Correa here. Four-star, three-star, high, medium. Not too bad. Not too shabby if we were to ever play. Let's see. One more day to sim. And we'll see what the situation is with the league table. It's championship Sunday. Final day of the season. Spurs can technically win the league title. If City botch it and Spurs wins, they win it all. We have no chance to finish in the top five. At best, we finish sixth if Everton drop points and we win. At worst, we finish eighth. So it'll be sixth, seventh, or eighth in terms of the league standings, which again, last year, final day of the season, we were where Swansea were. We had to win and hope that Watford dropped points. That somehow happened and we stayed up. So I'm not... I'm not too upset about the situation that we're in but that 52 scares me stoker in the relegation zone let's crush their spirits kick them back down to the championship and at the very least end the season on a high note bailey will get to play alongside galliano and aside from that the rest of the team is good to go let's do this our 38th and final game of our third season in the Premier League. Let's see what we can do. Is it a cold, rainy night? I don't know, but this should be a win. Three, two, one, and we lose. Wow. Started off this episode so hot, and then end it with a, for the most part, series of draws and losses. We finished the season in seventh, and in fairness, I think we would have lost in terms of the tiebreaker to Everton off a of goal differential. So we end up finishing in seventh. We go from, again, the great escape, staying in the Premier League to finishing seventh. That is a tremendous amount of improvement if you really think about it. I'm happy with it. It's just whether or not failing the extra couple of goals that are about to come up, it's whether or not failing that ends up pushing me towards... Uh, potentially being fired. $151 million made. And yeah, those, those warnings are very, very concerning. But there's nothing we can do. We have no other games left this year to play. As we get a transfer offer for Diaz and every email that comes through, my heart sinks just a little bit more. Please don't get fired. <laughs> Please don't get sacked. For the record... City ended up winning the league. Spurs, Liverpool, and Arsenal, the top four. Newcastle, Stoke, and Swansea were all relegated. Let's find out. I want to get confirmation of what's to come in this next season. Just to make sure we're good to go. As a matter of fact, though, I mean, we should probably look at what our team accomplished this year. I know we're not on track. I'm so sorry. Please <laughs> give me... Give me one more chance, please. We might be able to finish top five next year with the way certain players have developed. We might be able to, but you're not going to know for sure unless you let me stay, right? Give me just one more term, one more night, una noche. As far as how the team did this season, right, though, we probably should take a look. Ronaldo Granero up to an 89. He had 31 appearances, nine clean sheets. On the season, Harris is up by 4 to a 69. Walter Myers up to an 81, only 9 appearances on the season. O'Leary, no points, but still 39, 39 appearances and 88 overall. Kovac was up to a 73, of course he's on his way out. Johannesson, 23 appearances, he's up to an 82. Roldan up to a 68. Bailey up by 7 to a 79. Galliano now an 81. Meyer, or Weber I should say, still in a 72. He's going to be on his way out more than likely. We got Williams up by 10 this year. He's up to a 73, right to 78. 
Diaz will be sold. Hopefully, Zouabri's going out on loan next year. Medved's turned into perhaps the best left back in the Premier League, up to an 86. Villalaba's a 75, all the more reason as to why Weber is going to be on the way out. Richardson, 79. Alton, an 82. Cordoba, an 81. Cano, a 76. Diaby, a 72. Miranda, up by 5. Kiesta, up to a 63. Young Bauer, up by 8 to a 73, thanks to the training. Prado is 69, Bello is 69, Kude is 63, hopefully he'll be sold. Zahner is 74, Cameron a 59, who of course we brought in. DeGroote up by 6, Galliano, who we just brought in, is a 61. Berezovsky is 78, Romero is 73, Jay Morgan up to an 81, not bad considering his age. Arne is an 80, Miranda is 67, Luna is 63. No improvement for Moritz Meyer, but he did have 12 goals and 31 appearances. Better than Montendon, which is shocking. But Montendon, 11 goals in 36 appearances. He's up to an 87. Duarte, up to an 85, had 14 goals in 37 appearances. Breen, at the very least, up by 3. Ponce, up by 3 as well. Kelly, up to an 80. DeGroff, a 68. Tabucci, a 71. Renala Correa, of course, we just signed. You have Fuentes, who went up by 6. Villalaba, up to a 79. And Guzman, up to a 75. So the goal-scoring leader for us was Duarte, Meyer and Montendon also broke double digits, but the secondary scoring is where it was really lacking this past season. A more aggressive formation might just be necessary. And again, I don't expect us to be fired, but if we are, well, let's, uh, God, let's hope that doesn't happen. I would hate for the journey to end here. I would absolutely hate for the journey to end here. This episode will end once we get the confirmation that we are either good to go for next year or that we've been shit canned. Either could happen. I gotta be honest. That grade again, the 49, could drop even further. And if it does, it's a dangerous spot to be in. We have a little bit more training. Young Bauer's up to a 74. Again, there's a chance we could recall him even midway through next season and start to run a formation again that's built upon having wingers. As we'll take a look here at our first few scouting reports. Barr down in South Africa. Going to hold off on those two. Going to hold off on all of those players. Morris in Cameroon. We are going to hold off on all of those players. And Kennedy in Nigeria. We're going to hold off on all five of those players as well. So the last batch, or the first batch of the last batch of scouting in Africa not bringing back the best results but that might not be that might not be the worst case scenario for us we have to be a little bit close to having a maxed squad size yet again which of course will change heading into next season where we again go through the roster optimize and sell people as a result so let's find out the scouting or the not the scouting but the training is good to go and of course those loan moves don't go through they never do they very rarely do so we'll go ahead and take a look at that williams up to a 74 we might be able to get him to the point where he and bailey are the one-two punch although galliano's there but think about that galliano bailey and williams not a bad bit of center back depth for the record harry kane led the league in goals i want to make sure that that was shown and Chong was the player of the month. Big fan of his haircut. Not a big fan of the team he plays for. As we are approaching the moment of truth. And I believe, yeah, international. Okay, so we got some players out on international duty. Grinero, Meyer, Medved is out. Bailey as well. Not bad. Jay Morgan. You have Constantine Zahner, Montendon, and Duarte. Not bad at all. So who... Who should get a little bit of the training? If I look at players who are listed as special, uh, DeGroote, were you out on loan? You were not. So DeGroote will get a little bit of the focus. And let's go, we can't go for, well, we could put a little bit more time into Young Bauer. Let's go, again, Zahner's gone. What about Fuentes and Villalaba? Fuentes is not. Let's focus on Mateo Villalaba, who's already looking like an absolute monster. Those guys will be the focus here heading into the start of next season. They won't get that much attention, though, of course. So let's find out, shall we? It is a World Cup year, 
for the record as well. So it's not just international duty. It is a World Cup year, which is huge. Let's take a look at what, have, uh, what would have happened with the Champions League and everything else. Just to get a full recap on what the season's been. So the FA Cup went to Tottenham. They ended up beating Southampton. The Champions League... Or the Champions Trophy, not the Champions League, uh, went to Athletic uh, or Athletic Bilbao over Schalke. Uh, Super Cup, I don't care about. What about the Champions League? Get us to the real bit of business. I was looking at the flag and I'm like, wait a minute, that wasn't it. And Bayern ended up beating Man City on penalties. City beat Liverpool. Bayern crushed Juventus to make it to that point. The Europa League. The Europa League, we'll see who that went to. And of course, the World Cup, hopefully we'll get the update heading into next season once that's over and done with. Lyon end up beating Schalke in the Europa League final. Let's get that confirmation. What is the situation? Germany lost to Colombia. Damn. What is the situation here? I can stop the sim and maybe get that last training session in. Hello, it's the last. Yeah, it's going to go to the last day, unfortunately. Please don't drop. Please don't fire me. Please, one last training session. At least get Villalaba to an 80. Damn it. And at least would have, I would have been able to leave on a high note, knowing that Matteo Villalaba was certainly Premier League ready. Here we go. Are we good for next season? Please? Yes, we are. We are good for next season. I will see you guys then. Season 4 in the Premier League. Season 1 started well, and we dropped. Season 2 was a disaster, where we escaped on the last day. Season 3, we battle our way back up to the top half of the table. Season 4, the goal is clear. Top 5, more ideally, a top 4 finish. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed. Probably won't do the whole live for the entire deal next time, but hey, we made a good amount of progress. I'll see you then. Till then, have a good one. Take it easy. All the, you know, comments and everything, suggestions for what to do with this team heading into the next year. Let me know. I'll see you then. We're gonna be successful one of these days, damn it.